Welcome to Tune In with Talia. I'd like to welcome Wendy Law, a dear friend and very talented cellist, to my show. Welcome, Wendy. Hi. Thanks Hi. for having me. This is fun. Yes, <laughs> thanks for coming on. It's so of nice course. to see you virtually. I know. <laughs> in your beautiful home. Thank you. And you're in Florida now, right? Yep. Yeah, I moved to Florida recently. How's that? It's different. It's yeah. different. Um, I mean, I was in New York. I was living in New York for 20 years, basically, since we met um, and when we were at Julio together. Um, so, and the pandemic, you know, was pretty difficult at the beginning of it in New York. And I just need some fresh air. So, sounds smart. now I'm here. Sounds yeah. Nice. Sounds really relaxing and, and warm weather all year round. So, that sounds nice. Yes. Great. So, yeah, we met at Juilliard, I don't even want to say when, but a long time ago. Long time. Actually, it was right after something horrible happened, right? September 11th, right September around that 11th. time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what I, I felt blessed because I was, I was put into a suite with a bunch of women and you were in my suite. You were my suite mate. Floor 25, wasn't it? But that I don't remember. I just know you were in my suite mate. Yes, you're my suite mate. <laughs> And yes. I would listen to you practicing your beautiful cello for hours and hours a day and just literally sitting outside on the couch, listening next to your room and just being like, oh, I love this. Really? Yeah. You were listening to me for hours? No. No, I didn't have hours, but I, like in the evenings or in the mornings, like you yeah. know, I'd wake up and I'd hear beautiful cello music and it was just, like such a nice, I just loved it. And I, especially when you're practicing the Elgar. Oh, you remember that? Oh, that like, wow. That was like the first... That was my first real exposure to that, and I was, I've was i been obsessed with that ever since. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you turned me on to that. Totally. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that was that was fun, being your sweet mate. And then I've had you at the temple through the years. We've had, we've had you for Yom Kippur, playing Kul like Andre. Many years. Yes. Many yes. years, yeah. So you've helped to beautify, beautify our services and enhance our praying, and it was... We've been really lucky to have you. Well, thank you. And this past year was a little bit different, wasn't it? Right. We did the whole thing on live stream. It was Yeah, it was it was, it was different, but it was great to be part of it. It was fun. Yeah. So I want to tell everyone who's listening about you and your background. So Wendy Law has appeared as soloist with renowned orchestras, including the New York Philharmonic, Boston Symphony, Singapore Symphony, Russian Philharmonic and Juilliard Orchestra. In 2003, Wendy Law was invited by the Office of the UN Secretary General to perform at the General Assembly of the United Nations in a memorial ceremony for the UN staff and family members of those who lost their lives in the attack on the UN compound in Baghdad, Iraq. She has also been featured in New York's Barge Music and at the Caremore and Marlboro Music Festivals. A regular touring artist, Wendy has toured with musicians from Marlboro and has performed all over the world in many, in many, many countries. Her performances have been broadcast on TV and radio in the USA, Japan, and Hong Kong. Wendy received her Bachelor's of Music with distinction from the New England Conservatory and her Master's of Music in Artist Diploma from the Juilliard School. In addition to her active performance schedule, she is the founder and artistic director of Classical Jam, a chamber ensemble that brings together acclaimed musicians with the shared mission of presenting lively, high-caliber performances to diverse audiences. Wow. I actually remember when you... <laughs> and that's quite the... I've never had anyone, like, read my biography through, but okay, thank you. <laughs> like, wow, that's so impressive. And you've done nice. so much in your life and incredible things. And, I'm, and I remember when you you started classical jam when you were founded that that was you remember I remember that yeah i remember yeah. That. thinking how cool is she just, <laughs> just doing her own thing <laughs> yeah so so tell us where are you from originally well i was born in hong kong 
And、mm-hmm. I moved to the United States to Boston first with my mom when I was twelve,、mm-hmm. and then I basically stayed in Boston for all the way through college. And then when I got into Juilliard for my masters, that that's when I moved to New York. Got it. And was that a crazy culture shock? I'm sure at twelve, age twelve. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I lived outside of Boston,、um, but fortunately, my mom came with me, and also I had several aunts、mm-hmm. near the Boston area, so like they were there、oh, to、nice. support me, and it was so you, you know alone. No, I、Boston. wasn't alone at all. Yeah, so it was it was good. And were you raised in a musical household, or do you have family members that are musical, or are you? Just a phenomenon. <laughs> no,、um, actually, they're all musical. My、everyone. dad, yeah, everyone. Wow. My dad is a very well-known composer in Hong Kong. Oh, wow. So、mm-hmm. okay, that makes and, a lot of sense. And my mom was a music teacher, and she played the piano. Now she's an amateur opera singer. Oh.、Okay. Yes. So、um, yeah, it's, it's a totally musical background. And I know that my mom was like teaching piano like many hours a day when she was pregnant with me. Aww, so maybe it's, that's it's how like from utero got from utero. the、uh, <laughs> musical education early on <laughs> in her womb. <laughs> say, I'm sure there's definitely a link there. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah.、Yes. Very cool. Um. So, so your mentors were family members early on, early on, right? And、uh, who who else inspired you from you? Oh、age? gosh. I mean,、uh, yes. I mean, they they obviously.、Uh, I, I was very fortunate because my parents. They really supported me from very young, from when I was very young, you know, and they believed in me. But also, I was very inspired by Yo Yo Ma.、Oh. <laughs> I like loved him. I loved him. I was so inspired by him, and I always wanted to meet him. And I think, you know, I was so, just so, I admired him so much. I think it like manifested itself into actually meeting him and playing with him several times. When I was young,、um, like when I was a teenager, I played chamber mu- music with him several times,、wow. and then I like our paths just kept crossing.、Mm. Um, and then when I was at Juilliard, he gave a master class, and then, and then of course I was asked to play in the master class. And actually, because I played in that master class, that's how it led to my debut at the New York Philharmonic. Um, because、wow. people at the Philharmonic heard me play for Yo Yo, and they were like, "Okay, let's ask her to do a concert." So that's how it all like happened. And then actually, most recently, I crossed paths with him again. Wow! <laughs> like I, your,、um, your paths are meant. Yeah, because I'm. I think it's like the power of like, I don't know, manifestation, whatever you want to call it. But、um, most recent, recently, like a few years ago, well. I've been like a teaching artist at New York Philharmonic for like 18 years, so I work for their education department, and so he was soloing with the New York Philharmonic, and、um, it was like a new piece that required, I don't know, some sort of sound, like you have to try out the sound. So they asked for the education department for cellists, and then I happened to be. <laughs> So I played, you know, I was trying out the sound for him on stage. It was kind of cool. And then、um, afterwards, you know, he of course, you know, surprisingly, because he meets a lot of people, he remembered me. And、um, well, how could he not? <laughs> I mean, he meets a lot of people. Know, you know talent, what I mean? Talent, talent. I don't know, but anyway, so we had like a nice chat backstage afterwards. So it's just like, yeah, he's just my idol and inspiration. I, I hope I will cross paths with him yet again in the future. But you know, for me as a cellist, like I've crossed paths with him many times. Yeah. Oh, I've seen him perform live and amazing. Yeah, he's、It's、totally amazing. Very inspiring. Mm-hmm. So that's great. That's really cool.、Um, and so, out of your entire career so far, what has what has stood out? What performances have stood out for you as just really, really meaningful and fun and、mm-hmm. exciting? Well, I think I already just mentioned one,、right. which was my which performance was with Yo Yo Ma when I was a teenager,、um, like doing Schubert cello quintet. Yeah, <laughs> just like that. It's like you can't get much better than yeah, that, you know, as, as a, a cello. Yes, <laughs> or as a cellist, as even a cellist. you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.、Um, and then the other one you also mentioned in my biography was、um, playing at the UN, and and actually this happened when I was at Juilliard. Wow.、Um, and this was like. Shortly after September 11th, and it was a very sad moment in history. And 
Um, and it was really memorable because I felt like um, at that moment, like even in political turmoil and a lot of you know societal issues, that music could still be used as the light. And I was very grateful that I was given the opportunity and to play for families. Um, but also, I think, uh, well, and actually, the, the, oh my gosh, I was I forgot, but he was the head of UN, mm -hmm. Secretary General Kofi Annan. That's, yeah. Um, he actually wrote a personal letter to me. And, and, and to me, it wasn't about me per se, because basically in that letter, he kind of affirmed like the importance of music and how it can bring people together and, um, and how it gives a voice to emotions that cannot be expressed. So somewhere along those lines. And for me, it was such an important moment because I think at that time, which was shortly after September 11th, I think a lot of artists felt lost yeah you know right. they were like what the heck are we doing here i don't know if you remember that moment I and think a lot of people in general felt that way but yes like, what's our purpose right um, why why is this happening and mm -hmm. and it was a really sad moment um and and then to be affirmed by someone like the secretary general yeah. someone who was a politician right and to say that this is why music and the arts are needed yeah. Um, that was so important to me and it really gave me impetus in terms of all the work that I had done since, um, which was all about like audience development, education, arts advocacy, um, mm -hmm. and just kind of spreading the joy of music and classical music in like unique and different ways. And I think that's how I also found a classical jam. So that was sort of okay. like the the moment that yeah. yes that really uh, and actually by the way coming back always coming back to yo-yo is so funny because <laughs> the last time i saw him that i mentioned when i was trying out the sound for him at the philharmonic the first thing he said to me was because i, I wrote a um, an article about it in the Juilliard journal when i was still a student and he was like yeah your letter like this is like 10 15 years later when i saw him I was, yeah he was like yeah that letter that you wrote like he found out about it mm. and somebody actually did tell me that he found out about it um so mm. anyway um yeah, yeah so the article is what i meant I, I wrote an article about my letter from the the secretary general so those are like really key moments mm -hmm. um in terms of my career it's not about like that moment when i played the carnegie hall or that moment when i played with so-and-so or so-and-so orchestra I mean, those were important too, but it's like, I feel like my whole life's work is about not just like, not just about paving the way for myself, but I feel like I want to pave the way for the future for classical music. You know what I mean? And, and I, I just, I just firmly believe it's not just, it's, it's not the content. There's nothing wrong with the content of classical music. It's how you present it and how you program it, how do you talk to people about it, how do you make it relevant. Right. And so I feel like that has, in my, has been my whole life's work. Wow. And so over a year ago when this pandemic hit, it, um, I'm sure it, it's, it, it has affected you greatly, right, as a performing artist, in terms mm -hmm. of your touring schedule and all the projects you were working on. I mean, how? tell us about how your career shifted or how you coped with a pandemic as an, as an artist? Well, it's kind of funny because just like everybody else who is an artist, all my work was canceled. Right. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? And I was in New York back then, right? And But there's something that's funny about me that I don't often share, but I also developed an interest in um, blogging and doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, before the pandemic and I, I was just I just did it for fun for a while about beauty and cosmetics yes, I know I remember that the oh, YouTube right about makeup and <laughs> yeah so I was doing that and I became kind of popular in YouTube um, talking about cosmetics and reviewing stuff like that and then I created my own cosmetic line and then after I know and then You're after that faster you are just <laughs> and, and then after oh. that <laughs> after that I just 
I, I also, I mean, I enjoyed it. It was kind of like a side hustle kind of thing, you know. But I really wanted to focus my my time on my music, so I kind of stopped doing that. I stopped doing all the makeup and YouTube stuff, and I was like, I'm gonna put it aside. Right. Okay. But then what happened was, um, I I created a film. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear about this because I. Yeah, so it was all about, um, yeah, it's like a, a visual album, sort of like, you know, it tells a story through a series of videos that has music, and there's no dialogue, it's just music, and it tells a love story that is loosely based on personal experience, loosely. <laughs> so I was doing that, but, um, so I started doing that already in 2019, um, and I knew, I knew I needed to promote it, so I was already thinking about, like, starting to put up you know, social media content online to promote my film. But then the pandemic hit, which wasn't expected then. And literally like New York City shut down the next day. I was like, all right, I know how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do YouTube. I'm just going to smart. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to put myself out there and make videos about cello and just my passion about the cello. I play music. And I also taught online, you know, um, in my videos about how to play the cello. I also knew, I somehow intuitively knew that this was going to go on for a little bit. And I knew that I couldn't rely on performing right. um, uh, to make a living. So I was like, I'm going to create a platform where I'm going to talk about the cello and how to play the cello and just mm -hmm. tips and tricks and tutorials. And I could attract um, online students. I and that's exactly... <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. You know, I just, yeah. you know, my videos started going viral and I was attracting students from literally all over the world, from like Australia, China, Taiwan, all the way, Kenya, Africa, wow. all over South America. Um, and so resourceful and so smart. Like that you <laughs> thought of, like just, you, you know how to like take care of yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's Good. just, yeah. So basically it transitioned very quickly. And then in a couple of months I was teaching full time doing zoom lessons and making YouTube videos and also Instagram. Wow. And, um, and that actually helped promote my album slash movie. So that's it's basically passion. Right? Passion. Yes. Yeah, so that's basically <laughs> what happened. Yeah. Can we, can we see? Yes. A clip of that? I'm happy to share. Yeah, so um, it's it's kind of fun because this, um, let me see how we can do this. I'll talk first and then I'll okay. share. But um, basically, um, Passion is split into 12 videos and it's all Latin music, Latin Spanish. Mm -hmm. So you've got your straight up classical Spanish music. Yeah. Um, and then you've got your Bossa Nova, like the girl from Ipanema. And I know you love to dance. Oh, I yes. That from Juilliard Days. Ex Yes, you yes, remember. I remember. And, and actually, it's funny because I'm about to show you a dance clip. And this one is, <laughs> it's it's a tango. And I'm sure many of you may have heard it if you've seen um, The Scent of a woman. woman. I knew you were going to say that. Pour on a Cabeza mm -hmm. by Gardel. So in this particular scene, um, basically there's this guy in the movie that I keep trying to meet up with. And he keeps letting me down. And finally, I meet him in Barcelona. So that's the scene. So I actually trained myself uh, with with um, a professional tango dancer who's the guy who's dancing with me, who's playing wow. my love interest. And he's um, he, he he basically choreographed this whole thing for me. So th that's what this is. So I'm going to show you this little clip. Now let me share screen. <laughs> Hold on one second. And right here, let me know if you can see. Let's see. Uh, yes, we can. You want to open All it up? All right. Are we going to open screen? it up? And yeah. let me know if you can hear the sound. Okay. Because, yeah, let's hope that it works with the sound. Not yet. No. Do you hear any sound? A little bit. Raise it. Raise it. Yes.
you. You look <laughs> so happy and, and like in, in your, your essence. essence. You know? <laughs> Let me in plug this you. back in. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> Can you get out of that screen? Is there a way to minimize that? Stop share. Here we here go. go. Yes. Now they're it was back. Beautiful. And you're a beautiful dancer and a beautiful chest. And you're Thank just, you. You're, you have so much passion in both those things. And it comes through. <laughs> it really comes through. It, it also, I was thinking while I was watching how cello is like a form of dance. Like you're really like dancing. Oh, yeah, like you're, that's like you're, true. You're kind of like hugging this <laughs> object and like playing with it. It's my husband. <laughs> it's my husband. Yeah, what is your relationship like with your cello? Do you have like good days and bad days? <laughs> yeah, good days and bad days. Sometimes we argue, you know. <laughs> no. oh, it, it's just, it's so beautiful to watch you. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. So are you currently working on other projects like right now? And um, um, other movies or? Yes. I mean, so basically I really enjoy this kind of format of presenting music and um so what I've been working on before the pandemic happened was for this to be live. Mm -hmm. And I did one live show. So what that means is you would see the movie, yeah. but they will mute it. And I will be on stage playing live to the movie. So I did wow. that once. And mm -hmm. what I was hoping to do to, is to do more of it. And then, of course, it had to be stopped. Um, but I think I'll be doing some of that on cruise ships. <gasps> so there's some like high-end cruise ships that need like performances see that, yes. so I'm gonna be presenting this so I just really enjoy this kind of like you know um, presenting music in, in a unique way not like adding the visual aspect to it and for me of course as you know I love dancing so I was able to dance a couple times yes. in my movie <laughs> you know I took tango dance in the city that was like one of my favorite things to do oh did you yeah it was like a side thing I loved I love tango oh <laughs> yeah. Argentine tango yes Oh, how fun! Yeah. Oh. I, I, I checked out a couple studios, you know, here and there. And did nice. the late night malangas. It was fun. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that I'm not is. a great tango dancer. I'm more salsa dancer. Yes. But um, for this, I was like, I have to learn yeah. a little bit. I mean, I learned just enough. It was very hard, actually. And, you know, this was done with like a million different takes and you piece it together to <laughs> look like a decent dancer but anyway <laughs> did a really fabulous job with that film that was thank you really nice thanks so done. much Definitely done. yeah yeah so tell us I want to just shift a little bit to just what are who are your favorite composers and like who who do you love whose music do you just love to play and I know you know I know you play different kinds of music yeah so what what speaks to your heart the most or i mean it's a hard question I yeah it's a very hard question i mean certainly so um and by the way this whole thing that you just saw is the name of the album is called passion right. so like passion in spanish and mm -hmm. um so it's also an album that you can download if you're interested on my website which is wendylaw.com i'm going to share that you know after when I all those things so. yeah um, but um, but the, the I mean of course my interest has always been like anything that is passionate I mean the name of the the film is called Passion so anything that's passionate usually is like Latin music right. um, but I also love the classics like Bach yes. um, which now actually since the pandemic a lot of cellists have played Bach uh, online just because not only because it's great but also, we can't really play, or we had ha hadn't been able to play with people for a long time. So, like Bach, it just stands on its own. So, during the pandemic, I made another kind of. Um, it's not a visual album, but it's you know um, a movie type kind of um, video. Yes. Um, on Bach Suite One, which everybody seems to just love, because I made a video basically on YouTube comparing three different cellos. One was um, five thousand dollar cello. One it was a, a quarter million dollar, and the other cello was a million dollar cello. And I played Bach three times, mm -hmm. and I asked people if they can hear the difference. Oh, that's a fun little game. Yeah, and that <laughs> video went viral, and now it's at like something like three point four million hits. What? Yeah, and I think people are just like really obsessed with Bach. So I was like, oh, I would love to, you know, do a video just on the prelude of Bach 1 and then set it against the beach. 
um, because Florida, Florida has beautiful <laughs> beaches. Right. So my friend came from Chicago, and it's the same friend that filmed Passion, filmed me doing um, uh, Black Sweet. So if it's okay with you guys, yes, please. Please I would share. love to share it. We would love to see it and listen. Okay, let's see how we're going to do this. Here we go. Give me a second. I'm just going to unplug so you can see it. Here we go. Let me know you can see. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's nice. Good, And the visual of the birds and the beach and the expansiveness and the thank you so much it, it went right through me i was like really got i got emotional oh <laughs> it was beautiful well, thank you that's very it's nice really very beautiful. kind and it's also so healing so healing that music yes Something yes very healing about it there is I, I i've been trying to figure out why people are so obsessed with this particular Bach. well is is this particular one Yes. And then I realized it's because it's hypnotic. Yes. There's something hypnotic about it. The and because and yes, the repetition, like the pattern, da 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 and then you just like kinda go with it and you're just like, ah, oh, I don't know. It, just, it takes you on this like journey. <laughs> yes. So that's why I thought it's nice to pair with the ocean. You know? Yeah, um, that was beautiful. 
thank you so much together. yeah thank oh you. i love the stuff you're doing <laughs> yeah i'm really excited i i hope to do more of this kind of work um just like combining the visuals with yeah. music and what i'm hoping to do is do one of original music and so hopefully when things calm down with the pandemic you yeah. know i'll have an opportunity to do that and do you feel hopeful? I mean, I see that you have a Band-Aid on your arm. Yes. <laughs> that was yesterday. Um, I would have played live for you guys, but I was, my arm is really sore and I have a little headache. But it's, 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 I'm glad because like the little side effects I have, you know, I know that it's, mm -hmm. it's good for the world for me yes. to get it. So it it's a little bit of side effects. It's, it's, yeah. it's okay. Totally. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm hopeful that the more people that are vaccinated, that the future will open up for artists again to be on stage live mm -hmm. soon. I know things are already starting to happen. You know, there's a light. I've been talking to a lot of musicians about that. And oh, yeah. How that, that, yeah, they can see the light finally, you know, yes. for a while we were in the dark and now, now there's ho more hope. Absolutely. And meanwhile, I'm, and exactly. And meanwhile, I'm just grateful we have like, your platform or like other platforms to be able to connect online you know totally this is yeah it's been so much fun for me to reconnect with old friends and yes. check in with them and see how they're doing and coping with the situation and highlight them and show them off to the world because well thank you well, to my little world anyway but it's, <laughs> but um you know and then you never know you you will have for sure in this little period of time half an hour 40 minutes have touched someone so deeply and just that is Aww. and so it's so special and important in the work you're doing so, thank you i appreciate it yeah. <laughs> so keep doing it yes and um i'm just so grateful that we had this time is there something else that you'd like to share with us before before we go or another topic that you'd like to talk about we have time we still <laughs> oh well um do you have questions for me? <laughs> well, I was wondering how, you know, this is not the most, this is the not difficult thing that we are going through right in our country with, with hate. Yeah. And yeah. not just in our country, but in the world. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know how it's affected you, if it's affected you personally, and are friends of yours, and how, you know, your community is coping, coping with what's going on as a female Asian you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's been tough. I feel like this pandemic has really um brought out a lot of fear from people and actually all the hate it just stems from fear right it's if you look different and if you have a different culture different um political background or whatever is different then we're not the same if we're not the same then it's like somehow we're competing for resources or something you know and it's like for me for my personal belief I, I believe in abundance for everyone there's abundance everywhere we don't have to compete um, and so and also I mean so it's not just about Asians or Asian Americans it's just the whole thing you know with George Floyd yeah. as as we, ju we just had this um, you know uh, verdict that happened and um, but in terms of Asian Americans, you know, that have been hate because somehow, you know, it's so easy to blame another group for something that happens. Right. And and the thing is, it's not just it's not that simple. It's not it's not that simple. It's not just one group did something. It's we're all responsible. So, I mean, yeah, I, I personally haven't had, thankfully, too much um, like direct experience with someone um, putting hate, but certainly a lot of friends have experienced it but i would say this at the very beginning of the pandemic we're talking about um february 2020 like more than a year a year ago or march it was the very beginning in new york when mask was not a thing mm. um but already asia people in asia because it's part of their culture people already started wearing masks and meanwhile we were still debating whether mask was necessary okay. and and then i've heard in new york that on subways like if you're Asian and if you're wearing a mask, people got beat up. So I was afraid to wear masks because I was like, I don't want to be singled out. So I didn't, and then of course I got COVID. <laughs> but that was like when everything, everything was shut down already. Everything was shut down. 
Um, but schools were not shut down. So I was still taking the subway, teaching every day wow. in a public school. Right. And like I said, mask was not a thing yet in America. But thankfully, I had very minimal um, symptoms, very minimal symptoms. And um, but I definitely had it. Um, but anyway, so, you know, but that's like one small example of like fears. And I know that a lot of friends are fearful, especially in New York, because I've no, heard there are a lot of attacks. I've seen so many posts. Yeah, like in New York. And it's, it's been it's been very hard. It's, it's been, you know, very infuriating. Um, I just I, I, I would just say this as the last thing is that I just wish people learn how to be in somebody else's shoes. Yeah, and that's so I mean, for yes. all people, like if Have you're white, try to be, see what it's like to be a black person. And if, if you're a black person, try to think about what it's like to be an Asian person. And it's not just one group. There are all different kinds of groups that have attacked each other. And yes. so if there's more empathy, that's the word. Empathy. If, if, if people be would just, <laughs> yeah, just have yes. more empathy and just put yourself in somebody else's shoes. I, I think there would be a lot less hate. So that's just my I, take on it. Yes. Empathy is needed for sure in this yeah. world. For sure. And you know what I love about music, just to say about music, yeah. that is that it's a universal language. And mm -hmm. no, and I love that when I got to Juilliard in New York City and it was like such a diverse student body. You know, yeah. We're all doing music. We're all doing art. We're mm -hmm. all you know speaking a language that we can all connect. We, we don't even have to understand the language we speak. We just have to understand the language that we feel. Right. And, and, and that's such a connector for for the world music and that's why musicians are so important and need it and yeah. need it in this world because that is a that is the universal communication that's right great. it's like what you do at your temple <laughs> you know you you your voice is so beautiful and you bring healing and prayers and bringing people together why, that's why your work is so important thank you. yeah thank you <laughs> well i love you and i admire you and i think you're just incredible and keep doing what you're doing. Keep making thank art. Thank you. Thank and, you, Tati. Yes. And thank you for coming on my show. Yay. So everybody, thank you for listening to today, this evening, and for coming on, Wendy. And let's continue connecting beyond. And yes. And, and back at our synagogue soon. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, would you like me to share my information in case people want yes. to watch Please my do. videos? Can you share it in the chat or even after? Yeah. Yes, sure. yes. Please do, so you can find Wendy and enjoy yes. her on this <laughs> podcast. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>